All right, everybody, welcome back. We're diving deep today. And you know what we're diving deep into today? I think I have an idea. Yeah, probably. Uh, today's deep dive is into the world of audio mastering. The mysterious world of audio mastering. It really is mysterious. Have you ever, like, just sat back and listened to music and thought, wow, this sounds incredible. How do they do that? You know? I do that all the time. Like, how do they make it sound so polished? Right. It's magic, right? It is. It's basically magic. But uh, luckily for you guys, we are going to take a peek behind the curtain. It a little. We are going to try to demystify it. Uh, we are going to be drawing from a really insightful YouTube video today. Oh, excellent. It is by Edward Vinatea. And Edward Vinatea is from the Audio Mastering YouTube channel. It's appropriately Very named. Very appropriately named. And the video itself is called, Is Mastering One Song Necessary? That is a good question. It is a very good question. And the answer is, like everything in audio, it's complicated. It depends. It always depends. Let's talk about it. Right. So when you're thinking about audio mastering, a lot of people automatically think that's only for like full-blown albums. Right. It's part of putting out a big project. Exactly. But what we're learning today is that it can be just as important for even just a single. That's right. Yeah. Even if you just have one song that you're really proud of and you want to get out there, mastering can make a big difference in how it sounds. And this is super interesting to me. Huh. Tell me more about why someone would want to master even just a single song. Okay, so imagine this. You've poured your heart and soul into writing this song, right? You've got this awesome mix and you're ready to share it with the world. But then you start listening to it on different devices and it sounds different everywhere. Maybe the bass is too boomy on your car speakers, or the vocals are too quiet on your phone. That is so frustrating. I've been there, definitely. Right. It's like, what happened to my song? But that's where mastering comes in. A good mastering engineer can make sure your song sounds fantastic on any playback system. They're basically making sure it translates well across all these different listening environments. Oh, so that's why sometimes when you listen to music on, like, I don't know, cheap headphones or your laptop speakers, it still sounds amazing. Exactly. It's because the mastering process helps even out those frequencies, making sure that no matter where you're listening, you're getting the best possible experience. So it's not just about making the song sound good, it's about making sure it sounds good everywhere. Precisely. And you know, that's incredibly important in today's world where people are listening to music on such a wide variety of devices. Okay, so we get it. A polished sound across all platforms. What are some of the other big benefits that Edward Venetia highlights in his video? Well, he talks about three main benefits. The first one, and maybe the most obvious, is improved sound quality. Mastering can take a good song and make it amazing. It can bring out the details, add clarity, give it punch, and really elevate the overall sound. It's like taking it to the next level, right? From like home studio to radio ready. Exactly. And that's the second big benefit that Vinate talks about, consistency. Mm. When you master your track, you're basically making sure it's up to the same standards as professional, commercially released music. Ooh, so that's super important if you want to get on Spotify playlists or radio, right? You want to make sure your song doesn't sound out of place next to those big hits. Right, it needs to hold its own. Mm. And lastly, mastering just gives your music that final touch of professionalism. I love that. It's like, I'm serious about my music and this sounds amazing. It's a sign of quality. It shows you've invested the time and effort to make your music the best it can be. And that makes a big impression on both fans and industry professionals. Yeah, like, this is ready for the world. Now, I have to ask, though, the video did mention a few situations where mastering might not be totally necessary. Right. It's not always a must-have. What are those situations where mastering isn't absolutely essential? Well, the biggest one is if you're just not happy with the mix itself. If there are fundamental problems with the mix, mastering isn't going to magically fix those. Oh yeah, it's like putting a fancy frame around a blurry picture. It's not going to fix the blurriness. Exactly. So a solid mix is absolutely crucial before you even consider mastering. Another thing to think about is budget. Professional mastering can be an investment, and if you're just starting out or working on a limited budget, it might not be feasible. Right, and there's a lot of other stuff you have to spend money on as a musician, like recording, equipment, promotion. Yeah. It all adds up. Definitely. And while there are DIY mastering tools and software available, it can be tricky to get professional sounding results without the expertise of a mastering engineer. Okay, that makes sense. What about if you're not planning on releasing your song commercially? 
Like if it's just for sharing with friends and family, do you still need to master it? In that case, it's less crucial. But honestly, even if it's just for a few people, mastering can still make the song sound a lot better. You know, you've put all this work into it, why not make it sound as good as it can? Exactly. So while it might not be a necessity for non-commercial releases, it's definitely something to consider if you want to present your music in its best light. Okay, I'm sold on the why, but now I'm curious about the how. What are some of the things a mastering engineer actually does to a song? Sure, one of the key things they work on is balancing levels. So you know how sometimes you listen to a song and the drums are way too loud or the vocals are barely audible? Uh, yes, it's the worst. A mastering engineer makes sure everything sits at the right level so you can hear all the instruments clearly. It's like they're conducting an orchestra, making sure all the parts blend together harmoniously. Oh, I love that analogy. Everything has its place. Nothing is overpowering anything else. Exactly. And then there's equalization. Think of it like adjusting the tone knobs on your stereo to make everything sound more balanced. So if a song has way too much bass, they can tone that down and bring out the vocals more. Exactly. They can boost certain frequencies and reduce others to create a more pleasing and balanced overall sound. Then you have compression and limiting. These are techniques that can make the song louder and more powerful without distorting it. Okay, so compression and limiting are for loudness, but without making it sound like blown out or distorted. You got it. It's like giving the song that extra punch without making it sound harsh or unpleasant. And finally, there's stereo imaging. This is all about making the song sound wider and more immersive, as if the music is surrounding you. That's what gives it that live feeling, right? Like you're actually in the room with the band. Exactly. So all of these techniques together help create that polished, professional sound that makes a song really stand out. This is fascinating. So Edward Vinatea clearly lays out all these benefits of mastering, even for single songs. But what's his overall take on it? Yeah, so while Venete acknowledges that there are times when mastering might not be absolutely essential, like we talked about, his overall recommendation is pretty clear. I'm on the edge of my seat. Yeah. What's the verdict? He highly recommends mastering for anyone who is serious about their music, especially for commercial release. He believes that it's an investment worth making to present your music in the best possible light. It's like the final polish, the cherry on top. Yeah, and he even suggests getting a second opinion from a mastering engineer. Yeah. You know, to get their perspective on your music and what they think could be improved. Okay, I'm totally convinced. Now that we've all had this peek behind the curtain of audio mastering, do you think it changes how you listen to music? Like, can you now hear some of these elements we talked about? Yeah, I think it definitely does. Once you understand the process and what goes into it, you start to notice these subtle details that you might not have paid attention to before. It's like you've unlocked a secret code for your ears. Exactly. So the next time you're jamming to your favorite tunes, see if you can hear the magic of mastering at work. And hey, that is it for this deep dive. Thanks for hanging out with us, and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs> see you next time.